This video shows how to downgrade an AMD BIOS and a Giza on AMD motherboards that have an AMI BIOS. Sounds interesting? Let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to another video. Well, in the last video I mentioned how I upgraded a BIOS on two motherboards only to have heaps of problems afterwards. Pass-through was broken, being the main thing, meaning that I couldn't run my VMs with pass-through hardware. Well, in the comments it seemed that a whole load of people had had the same problem. They'd upgraded the BIOS and things went wrong. So this is a video about how to downgrade the BIOS back to one that worked before. Now it's quite difficult because after upgrading the vendors make it impossible to downgrade with the built-in tool on the motherboard to do this. Basically they worry about you downgrading to a BIOS that doesn't have support for the CPU that you have in your system. So if anyone wanting to downgrade, please make sure that the BIOS that you choose to downgrade to was out after your CPU was. Because if you downgrade to one that was out before your CPU was, then you may well not be able to actually boot up at all. And if you can't boot up, then you also won't be able to upgrade your BIOS back to one that does have support for your CPU. So please be careful. Now, I was speaking to my friend the other day before making this video and he thought that I shouldn't make this video in case people do something wrong and brick their motherboard as a result. And I really was in two minds as whether to make this or not. So obviously I decided to make it, but I'm gonna give one big disclaimer here. BIOS flashing can go wrong and brick your motherboard. So be careful and if you do this, you're doing it at your own risk. And this video shows how to downgrade an AMD motherboard that has an AMI firmware. I have put in a couple of extra steps in this video that hopefully should make sure that you don't flash something that you shouldn't. So please try and watch all of the video without skipping through bits. Yeah, yeah, I know it's difficult not to skip, especially with my boring voice. And you've probably actually already skipped over this introduction anyway. I know, but hey. So with warnings out the way, let's do this. First I'm going to upgrade my motherboard to the newest BIOS, and then after that, downgrade it back. So on this motherboard, I'm on a working BIOS that works fine with pass-through, and that's version P2.00. Now if I quickly have a look on the ASRock website, there's a new BIOS which came out on the 25th of July, version 3.30, which uses an Agisa 1.0.0.3. Now the last two BIOSes for me broke pass-through and it started with a Giza 0.0.7.2 and this is also the first BIOS for this motherboard whereby in the BIOS notes it said that the user will not be able to flash previous BIOSes after going on to version 3.10 and above. Now you might wonder why they don't actually let you downgrade the BIOS but this actually does make quite good sense. It's because these BIOSes have support for the Ryzen 3000 series in them. So if you were to have a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, then you downgraded to a BIOS that didn't have support for that CPU, then you'd brick your system. So that's why they don't let us downgrade after we've upgraded to a certain BIOS. Okay, so now as you can see, I've just upgraded this motherboard to BIOS version P3.30. And again, unfortunately, when I tried out this BIOS, pass-through was still broken. So what happens if we actually try and flash back down using just the onboard BIOS flasher on the motherboard? It will just tell us that the BIOS we're trying to flash is an invalid file. However, we can actually downgrade the BIOS because it isn't actually a physical limitation as why we can't. It's just built into the software that stops us from downgrading. So what we have to do is actually make our own special USB flash drive in order to do this. But the flash drive we're going to create is only used to flash AMI BIOSes. So if you're not sure if your BIOS is an AMI BIOS, then if you disable like full screen logo or the equivalent on your motherboard and set it to disabled, when the actual machine boots up, you won't see the kind of logo of the vendor. You'll just see basic text boot up and you should be able to see then whether it's an AMI BIOS. Okay, so your AMD motherboard does have an AMI BIOS. So let's go ahead and create the flash drive just to let us downgrade it. And because most people do have access to a Windows machine, I'm going to be creating the flash drive on Windows. But the principles for creating it are just the same on any operating system. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to download the file in the description of this video, this one here called downgrade bios.zip, and then we need to unzip it onto the desktop. Then next go to your motherboard manufacturer's website and download the BIOS for your board. There's two BIOSes here that we're going to need. The one that you're currently running at the moment, and for me that's 3.30, we're going to need that one. And of course we need to download the BIOS, which we want to downgrade to. And for me here, that's version 2.00. So download both the BIOS files and put them onto your desktop. So with the files downloaded on the desktop, just extract the files. And so there we have my current BIOS file there, so I'm going to rename that and call it Existing BIOS. Now make sure you change the file extension to .rom. And for the one you want to downgrade to, just call that BIOS.rom. And just take these two files. Now we want to open up the folder on the desktop, which was the extracted file that we downloaded from the description of the video. Inside there you'll see a folder called EFI, go into that, then into the one called boot and paste the two BIOS files into here. So with that done, we actually need to go back into that same folder and inside you'll see a program called Rufus, which is used to create USB flash drives. So we're going to need to run that. And you can see here I've got a USB flash drive plugged in. Now it's a really small one, it's only 250 megs, but you can use one any size up to about 32 gigs. And for boot selection, just change it to non-bootable. And partition scheme, it's important to format it as a GPT partition. And I'm just going to label this as AMI BIOS, but you can call it anything you like. And it must be formatted in FAT or FAT32. Now, if you're not using Windows to do this, then just use any disk management software that will let you format the stick with a GPT partition scheme and a FAT file system. Okay, so with that done, now let's go back into the folder here and go to the EFI folder and we're going to cut that and copy it across into the root of the USB flash drive. Then with that done, our USB flash drive is prepared and we can use it to downgrade the BIOS. Okay, so now put the flash drive into the machine into which you want to downgrade the BIOS. Then boot the machine into the one-time boot menu so you can choose which device to boot from. And my flash drive here is listed as USB flash disk 1100, but you can see that it's listed twice. We need to boot from the reference that says UEFI beforehand. So boot into the UEFI version of your flash drive and you should come to a shell. Okay, so now that we're in the shell, we're going to have to change to the flash drive that we just created. And for me, I have to type in FS0 colon. And just to check that this is the flash drive that I want, I'm going to list the contents of the directory and I can see the EFI folder there. Now it's important to list the directory just to check you're in the right drive, because if I change to FS1 here, and then list the contents here, that's my unraid flash drive. So what I'm basically trying to say is your flash drive could be anything. It could be FS0, FS1, FS2, 3, etc. So make sure you change to the directory and just list through and check you're in the right drive. So then type CD space EFI in capitals and that will get us into the EFI directory. And then next we want to type in CD space boot again in capitals and that will get us into the boot directory. Now let's list out the files with LS. And if you're in the right place, then you should see these files here. Note the BIOS.ROM and the existing BIOS.ROM that we copied in earlier. So, now this is where we're going to use the file existing BIOS.ROM. And this is just as a safeguard. As I said at the beginning of this video, I was in two minds as to whether I should make this video, as the last thing I want is people doing something wrong and bricking their motherboard. So this file, existing BIOS.ROM, is the BIOS file that is currently on this motherboard. Remember, I downloaded it from the website earlier. So we're going to use this as a test, that this program is the right one that you should be using for your motherboard, by doing a dry run with the existing BIOS without actually flashing the motherboard. So type in the command afuefix64.efi space existing bios.rom space and then the forward slash d which will do a dry run just a tip for those who don't know you can use tab to autocomplete type capital a then tab and it will autocomplete afuefix64.efi 
and then the same, type an E then tab to auto-complete existing BIOS.ROM. No need to type everything manually. So this dry run with the existing BIOS will read the BIOS on the motherboard and then compare it to the file existing BIOS.ROM, letting us know if it's compatible. And of course, it should say everything is fine, and the result looked like this. Now, if it doesn't, then something's wrong. Stop. Don't go any further. Double check everything. Is your motherboard using an AMI BIOS? And did you definitely download the same BIOS that is currently on your motherboard right now and name it existing BIOS.ROM? If you got the same result as I have here, then good. Let's carry on. So next we're going to type in the same command as before and do a dry run, but this time on the BIOS that we're downgrading to, so on the file BIOS.ROM. So let's speed this bit up a bit, and this time with the BIOS that we're downgrading, we're going to see that it says the ROM layout has changed, and it'll say warning, file information does not match the system BIOS. Now this is perfectly normal and this is fine, so we'll just type yes to continue. So at the end of this dry run, you should see it looking like this. Okay, so now we're ready to do it for real. Okay, so now type afuefix64.efi space bios.rom space forward slash capital P space forward slash capital B space forward slash capital N space forward slash capital K space forward slash capital X and then hit enter. Again, just like in the dry run, you're going to get a warning saying the ROM file information does not match the system BIOS. So just press Y to continue. Now again, this is massively sped up, but basically it reads the flash, and then it erases each block, programs each block, and then verifies each block. And then at the end, everything's done, and your BIOS will be downgraded. So now just restart the computer and go into the BIOS, and you should see that the BIOS is downgraded. You can see that mine here is version 2.00, so that's all good. Oh yeah, and just one thing, don't forget to reset up your BIOS. You have to set up the boot order, um, SMV and IOMMU, etc. You'll have to set all that up again because they won't be enabled now you flash the BIOS. So guys, that's it. And again, I'm going to say again, please guys, be really careful downgrading your BIOS. Don't make those motherboard vendors really happy by bricking the motherboard and having to buy a new one because they're going to be the only guys happy from that. Okay, so anyway, with those warnings out of the way, I really do hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. If you did, then please, as always, guys, hit that like button and share it with others if you think they'll be interested too. If you're not a subscriber, of course, please subscribe. And a big thanks to all of my supporters and Patreons. Thank you so much, guys. It's your support that makes these videos possible. So it's time for me to go now, but whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in another video.